Hey, what's up guys? I am Ryan with Extreme Hardware. Today, I got a big boy for you. The RTX 3090 Ti Amp Extreme Hollow from Zotac. By now, you've all heard of the recent launch of NVIDIA's RTX 3090 Ti, or is it Ti? Whatever. Zotac was kind enough to send over their flagship model, the RTX 3090 Ti Amp Extreme Hollow, so many thanks to them. This time around, NVIDIA has enabled all 84 SMs on the Ampere GA102 process, which translates to 10,752 CUDA cores, 336 Tensor cores, 336 TMUs, and 112 ROPs. The now little brother, the RTX 3090, has 82 of those SMs enabled, translating to 10,496 CUDA cores. However, both models have the same amount of VRAM, 24 gigabytes of GDDR6X memory. But the RTX 3090 Ti ups the boost clock to 1.86 gigahertz and memory clocks to 21 gigabits over the 1.7 gigahertz boost and the 19.5 gigabits found on the RTX 3090. So just by looking at the numbers, the RTX 3090 Ti should only be 2.4% faster on the core and 7.7% faster on the memory clocks than the RTX 3090. However, the RTX 3090 Ti has a whopping 450 watt power consumption rating. So why was this card made? Well, I think it's a case of because Nvidia can and will continue to innovate. Looking at the raw specs alone, it doesn't really look like much of an improvement, but to some, the upgrade to an RTX 3090 Ti might be worth it. Stay tuned to find out more. So what does Zotac's RTX 3090 Ti Amp Extreme Hollow provide? Well, this RTX 3090 Ti has one freaking big cooling solution, dubbed the Ice Storm 2.0. And for good reason too, as Zotac recommends a 850 watt PSU to power this bad boy alongside the new PCIe 5.0 16 pin plug that Intel has released. Back to the heatsink and fans, putting this RTX 3090 Ti into the 3.5 slot size category, which I'm personally rounding up to four slots, since the GPU has to have some sort of breathing room anyways. The heatsink fans are three 11 blade fans measuring in at 100 millimeters each, which the left and center fans will spin together to cool the GPU and VRMs, while the right fan helps with the flow through design and better case airflow. Moving to the heatsink itself, it has eight machined copper heat pipes attached to a very thick array of aluminum fins. This cooling solution measures in at about 64 millimeters in total thickness, including the all metal backplate. Under the hood, Zotac has once again chosen to go for a custom PCB design with an 18 plus 3 power phase for the VRMs, increasing the power limit that the OG RTX 3090 had to a staggering 450 watts, means there is a lot more heat to expel. The RTX 3090 Ti GA102 die is also surrounded by 12 2GB modules of GDDR6X memory, which for the astute among you, Nvidia as well as add-in board partners, no longer have to put the GDDR6X memory modules on the backside due to increased memory density, unlike last year's RTX 3090. The boosted GPU clock, which is set to 1890 MHz, seems to be a bit conservative. A dual BIOS switch, or should I say, in the software, is also present, so if performance is what you are after, Amplify mode is your ticket, which will raise fan speeds, thus allowing the GPU to boost even higher. If acoustics are desired, switch to quiet mode, and the temps will be a little bit warmer with lowered fan speeds, which will in turn make noise less audible. FYI, Amplify mode is the default BIOS. Now, what's a Zotac GPU without some RGB action? Well, the Halo is certainly not lacking in that department. Having an iridescent holographic finish, the Ampistream Hollow displays an Aurora-like light show, which is controlled with Zotac Spectra 2.0 RGB via the Zotac Firestorm software. There, you will be able to control the lighting as well as having the ability to see how far you can push this beast of a GPU. Lastly, before we tear down this bad boy, let's take a look at the rear I.O. Capable of running a quad display setup consisting of three DisplayPort 1.4a ports, along with a single HDMI 2.1 connection, which are all capable of a resolution of 7680 by 4320 at 60 hertz with HDR. Also included in the box with the RTX 3090 Ti Amp Extreme Hollow is a GPU support bracket that lights up RGB. Tearing down the Zotac RTX 3090 Ti Amp Extreme Hollow down to the bare PCB and GA102 core reveals that 18 plus three power phase design, as well as a large square cutout for the 
flow through design. Also, the GDDR6X memory is from Micron, so overclockability should be good. On the top edge of the PCB are eight voltage readout points if additional information is desired. Moving towards the end of the PCB on the right is a single 16 pin PCIe 5.0 plug. A three by eight pin PCIe two 16 pin adapter is included. This plug is unique to the RTX 3090 Ti since previous models had a simpler 12 pin version, which are not interchangeable. Interestingly enough, it seems like additional power traces were built, but are not being utilized. Three additional connections on the end, colored red, black, and white, provide controls for the RGB lighting. The heatsink array that Zotac has decided to put on their AMP Extreme Hollow model has eight machine copper heat pipes with densely spaced aluminum fins, all connected to a very large vapor chamber. This vapor chamber looks like it is cooling the GDR6X memory modules directly, however, does not come in full contact with the VRMs, rather has just a metal extension from the vapor chamber itself. So for the test pen system, I took out a lot of the components out of the mid-range Alder Lake PC build I did a while back. Check out that review here. For the CPU is an Intel i5-12600K. I would have loved to test this GPU with the new i9-12900KS, but Intel hasn't shipped that out to me just yet. For the motherboard is the Gigabyte Aorus Z690 Pro, which is really full featured and will be more than enough for the i9 upgrade in the future. For memory, a 32 gigabyte kit of DDR5 RAM from SK Hynix at 4800 mega transfers. I swapped out the Be Quiet Dark Power 12 750 watt PSU for the Antec High Current Gamer 1000 watt. And I would really recommend anyone to do the same as these monstrous GPUs can really chug the power. For CPU cooling, I left the Be Quiet Pure Loop 280 millimeter on, which you can't see, and everything is mounted to the open bench table, open test bench. Using an open test bench really takes the case out of the equation and really focusing on the most true temperatures and characteristics that the GPU has to offer. Jumping into benchmarks, I ran a mix of ray tracing and GPU intensive titles. First was Halo Infinite. Being decently optimized, the RTX 3090 Ti Amp Extreme Hollow managed to squeeze out 131 FPS average at 4K with everything cranked up to ultra. Cyberpunk 2077 was up next, which managed around the 60 FPS marker, which is actually pretty good since this game does bring the hurt to just about any GPU. You. Now on to synthetics. I ran 3D Mark, Fire Strike Ultra, Port Royale, and Time Spy. I was thinking that I was going to be CPU bound from using Intel's i5-12600K, but to my surprise, it managed to get a better physics score than my workstation's AMD Threadripper 3970X which also happens to have an RTX 3090. Next, I wanted to heat up the GPU to 100%, which I chose to run Unigen Heaven's benchmark. You can see what temps, noise, and power consumption was in those respective test sections. Lastly, I tested Blender, which seems to better isolate the GPU, and it seems that this RTX 3090 Ti has netted a spot in the higher tier. Moving on to power consumption and overclocking. Like I said before, this GPU just guzzles the power. Running at the stock power limit, the wattage peaked out at 458.6 watts. When I started playing around the sliders in Zotac's Firestorm software, which you could use MSI's Afterburner or even Nvidia's built-in performance tuner, I was able to get an additional 10% in power limits, resulting in a total of 110%. This means this RTX 3090 Ti has the possibility to draw an additional 45 watts, totaling 495 watts. Now that the power limits have been extended another 10%, overclocking netted an additional 75 megahertz on the core, boosting to 2085 megahertz. The GDR6X memory modules were up 200 megahertz as well with a total of 10,700 megahertz or 21.4 gigabits per second. This led to a total GPU power consumption of about 500 watts. But GPU-Z reported a total power limit of 111.1 TDP. Interesting. Temperatures for the most part were quite impressive. Idling at 52C with a zero RPM fan profile when there was no to little load on the GPU keeps the noise to a minimum until temps rise to 60C or so. While running a graphically intense benchmark like Unigen's Heaven, the GA102 core heated up to about 72.3C while maintaining around 2242 RPM fan speed, resulting in only about a 42 dB for noise. Hotspot temps almost hit 83C, which is under the 93 C threshold to be of little concern. So in closing, the RTX 3090 Ti is a stupid GPU. What I mean is, what did the RTX 3090 do that the RTX 3090 Ti could do even better? 
or in this case, slight bit better. It's kind of funny how we as enthusiasts chase after performance, but now we say that this GPU is stupid or pointless. By all means, the RTX 3090 Ti is a stupid fast GPU, and I wouldn't hesitate for a second to slap in Zotac's RTX 3090 Ti Amp Extreme Hollow in my main workstation. But unfortunately, this GPU must go back as it was only a loner. Zotac has priced their Amp Extreme Hollow version of the RTX 3090 Ti at 2100 USD, which is about $100 more expensive than the Founders Edition RTX 3090 Ti from Nvidia directly, and the Core Edition from Zotac themselves. That $100 premium gets you 30 megahertz boost in boost clocks of 1890 megahertz versus 1860 megahertz. You also get a very capable cooler with a vapor chamber integrated into that design. So if you're the type that needs the bleeding edge hardware, here it is. Also keep in mind that the cheapest RTX 3090 is going for somewhere around 1700 USD, which is about 20% cheaper and is about 10 to 13% lower in terms of performance. All right, guys, that's going to do it for my look at Zotac's RTX 3090 Ti Amp Extreme Hollow. If you guys haven't liked, subscribed, or shared by now, please consider doing so to help Extreme Hardware grow. Thanks for watching. I will see you in the next one.